Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that all have phones. Hey there, Blizzard brothers and sisters. Thank you for tuning in. Um, in today's um, video, I'm gonna talk about Blizzard fiasco and Diablo catastrophe that happened um, on the Blizzard Con 2018, November 2nd and 3rd and everything that followed last month and all these things. I'm gonna group them out and, and deliver you this in this video. I'm gonna be focused on the business side because on this channel I'm educating people how to build games and uh, help them get the games who have a good user base and who can make revenue so their games can grow and the people can actually build a new generation of games that can uh, uh, be independent from these big co corporations. Because the, the real power to create something magnificent, especially in the game industry, it is coming from smaller studios, not from the studios owned by big corporations. We see outrage fans across the board, both from Electronic Sports and from Blizzard uh, recently. And we see that even in, in other parts of the world, in other genres and in other games. So um, let's dive in to this video. Like you saw on that on that video uh, produced by by Blizzard in 2010, um, that was some of the lineup that uh, Blizzard had, and they added a few more games later, like Overwatch and um, Heroes of the Storm, and um, they have also Hearthstone, and yeah, a couple of more titles that got released. But um, let's fo let's get our back focus now. Um, on really what happened, uh, I think you all know what happened, but I, I just want to go once again so so people who are watching this for the first time for my audience they know. At the Blizzard Con 2018, at the biggest announcement, the Blizzard put a big PR invi inviting all the fans, especially Blizzard fans for Diablo game, their very famous Diablo game, which is, um, I, I have to say with so many fans across the titles diablo fans are really hardcore fans you don't have uh, other titles like uh, warcraft or like um, starcraft they're not that deep the hardcore passion mostly because diablo is very similar to DD, and many people who enjoy playing DD also enjoy playing enjoying playing Diablo. The, the, these, these two games are so similar in many ways, and these fans, Diablo fans, the core, the core driver fans uh, are simply going nuts over what happened. And um, what happened is that Blizzard got them together. They're all playing PC games that are very hard, very intensive, and that they require long hours. People who play Diablo, sometimes 10, 12 hours um, going to different quests and, and uh, farming and things like that. So they get them all together. They have big PR, big marketing, that something huge is coming. Everybody there in that room have been expecting Diablo 4. What they got is a mobile port that, that's uh, basically reskin with NetEase from China, uh, reskin of one of NetEase's games and uh, delivered to them like a big lunch. Now, whether, whether they knew um, this is going to happen and they didn't care, it's one way. The other way is they knew and they did it anyway, which is even maybe worse. I mean, you, you pick one of those because there's no other other option. If they didn't know this is going to happen, this is a disaster for the company. Disconnect from the fan base that's so massive fan base means that they really have no clue what they're doing. And the second one is if they did and they, they knew this is going to happen and they, they did it anyway is just showing you how much they don't care actually about these players. 
and uh, th th that's one of the problems. Yeah, so let's let's dive into the, the, the numbers. Um, as you all guys know, the the, the, um, the stock price of uh, Activision Blizzard was around eighty three dollars. Right after this announcement, uh, on the very first day of November third, the price was down significantly. Today, in December of two thousand eighteen, the price is below. 46 US dollars. This is almost half of the original price. Almost. And this only have one word, it's damn. The company is going to die. Uh, this is first opinion about Blizzard. The company we all love and grow up uh, playing their games. We would do anything to keep this company alive if the things were different. And I'm going to just explain how they are not different and what, what's going on uh, actually. As you know, the founders of Blizzard, uh, guys Allen and Frank from 91, sold their company before became major successful company. Unlike Steve Jobs and Wozniak and, and, and Bill Gates at Microsoft and, and other great founders around the world, um, they kept their company, they received outside investment to grow their company. Blizzard sold their company early on, very early, and then kept working for uh, uh, owners. So they they were a private company for a long time. Their original uh, um, owner was uh, Davidson and Associates from 94 to 98 when the, the, they sold the company to Vivendi Games. Vivendi Games sold the company from 98 to 2008 and then sold to the guy Activision. Activision guy which was basically Phantom Company at the time, um, it was the guy named uh, Bob Kotichk, Kotichk, Bob Kotichk, the guy who have a previous failure experience working in Yahoo. Uh, the, 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 he was one of the directors that draw Yahoo under the ground. And uh, he also worked, uh, got kicked out from Coca-Cola Company. He also worked helping Japanese company Nintendo import the consoles to US. That was his primary source where he was earning a lot of money. He was one of the associates, associates there. Um, now with guy like Bobby, who is really very distant from the game, he has no passion, he really don't care. He see that like a big uh, pile of cash that he can earn from the stupid uh, players or just playing the games they love. That's how he see that. And I'm gonna explain that very quickly when you see the, the, what happened. Blizzard company has become, in the last uh, 10 years, uh, one of the worst companies to work for. They took over the company in 2008. And uh, um, if you talk to the people, what happened since 2008, all the senior management that was Blizzard uh, uh, core employees, the, the Blizzard leadership, got kicked out. Mostly how they kicked them out and how they, they with one swift, killed them all was taking away something that was in Blizzard. It is a revenue share for employees. If you were just an entry level, you had a very small revenue share from the company earnings. If you were a senior, one of the people who really were, were that connection between the players and the company and that were really building uh, uh, that from your heart, you had a higher compensation. So you had people earning a um, decent amount of money th and th they were doing a lot of work to keep th all those fans to keep everything in check that, that the company was uh, what, what the company was doing that the guy that was one of early creators in in Diablo Mark Ken uh, uh, Marky uh, tweeted in a series of tweets that, that one of the last things he said is Blizzard never used to ask he's uh, he's saying that he, the Blizzard understood the uh, its gamers because it was built by gamers because it was made up of hardcore gamers from the top to bottom. We used to say we were our own harshest audience for our games. I would have, uh, I would have had a line of devs outside of my door telling me this was a bad move. 
So what, what actually Mark is, is talking about is that culture in Bl Blizzard was so game uh, uh, driven that people who were working at Blizzard knew exactly what they should do from the entry level to the very top senior level they all were on the same page well that all changed later to, to, after 2008 and all those people got kicked out and the new management rise the one that didn't have any subsidiary so for them is just doing the work get a paycheck go home basically the passionate thing got bricked off from from the the, the company and um Bobby was earning 3.2 million dollar a year salary which is okay salary for a, for a good company the good company the good founder the good leader should have even higher salary for leading a, a such a successful company in the world brand of games many people in my generations uh, a little older a little younger when you say to them games they think about blizzard that is literally what happened same like the computer industry those guys uh, from uh, uh, early early days of apple when you tell if you said to one of them a computer they are thinking about apple computer in the games this was the the, the way it was now what bobby didn't uh, you you don't know probably is that bobby is earning above 3.2 million is earning 65 million dollars a year from uh, activision blizzard so basically he's earning every year 68 million dollars because he's one of the largest shareholders in the uh, that joint uh, corporation there now he's earning this per year which make him one of the highest paid ceos in the world um 65 million is a lot of money i'm gonna tell you from the corporate perspective that's a huge pile of money you can basically take one year paycheck from your shareholders shareholding and you can build another company right after there that can can compete with your own company that's a huge money most of the world uh, 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 big ceos don't get this amount of money but this guy did the, the the name is bob bobby bobby kotichek kotichek um now despite all of this the the fans the people who love blizzard still keep working there do you know that the employees in blizzard today majority of them don't have enough money to have a decent living um, so many of them reportedly don't have enough money for food and many of them became homeless over the past five ten years in in in, in california uh, many of them uh, lost everything they had and the company simply didn't give a damn for them so that's the culture that emerged in blizzard now let me give you another uh, um, uh, so something interesting that also can can verify what i'm talking about is here we have the er blizzard earnings since 1999 uh, there are no earnings records re records uh, before because it was a privately held company davidson and associates till 80 uh, 98 one uh, yeah that there is no records it was privately held but since 1999 it was part of the uh vivendi games so we have all the records and you can see how the everything grew mostly organically the company was making more and more money until the point of 2007 when you see that it's a billion and a half and you can see the next year it's almost three billion dollars so what does this tell you is that these corporates came and said earnings to the top they, they, they double the revenue and they keep growing that you see in 2017 they're at the seven billion dollar mark earning per year for the company which is huge this is just a single company uh, 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 in 2017 having a, a 10 almost how much it's a seven and uh, seven percent I'm gonna tell you right now how much is it just give me a moment that's around that's around five six percent of the entire industry and you know how big gaming industry is six percent five six percent of the industry that's massive massive 
uh, 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 th th they have that they are earning. Now, uh, it's not a problem. Nobody's talking about what actually was at the event. The nobody's blaming blaming Blizzard for doing a mobile game. What they're blaming blaming them is doing a PR and marketing to the core base of, of uh, Diablo. That's the most the most hard diehard fans are there. Uh, like I mentioned and telling them that their favorite game is going to be downgraded to the mobile to do. Now, in the previous videos where I'm talking about how it's important that young people, that, that, that somebody who's just starting to build a game, build a mobile game, I'm referring to the people who want to break in the industry and improve themselves is uh, they should start on the mobile. I'm teaching people, I'm helping people build companies and, and make more, get more users, get more re revenue. But what I wanna say is in the episode where I said they should team up with uh, companies that have IP, I didn't necessarily mean <clears throat> Blizzard. I didn't mean Blizzard should team up with NetEast and reskin the game uh, uh, and, and do this. This is outrageous. This is hurting everybody. Now, what I want to tell you is this, what you see he, here now happening to Blizzard and what you saw happening to the Electronic Arts with uh, uh, Command and Conquer, which is exactly the same. This is copy paste. It's like they got together and said, okay, how we can these guys who are our followers how we can bring them out so we can do our business by ourselves because we don't need them that's basically what these guys did um what you see here is fans from all over parts of the blizzard coming together warcraft fans oh my god how much they suffered when the world of warcraft got released they simply didn't want to provide any support to the people who didn't go to world of warcraft now uh, now at the time, the, the Warcraft in itself uh, got so many Dota players. Dota used to be a custom map that so many people loved to play. It got such a popularity because it was a new way to play existing games. It became so popular beside uh, Tower Defense and Uther Party that was also very popular. The, the Dota became extremely popular uh, map on Warcraft, uh, uh, Frozen Throne and... Um, reign of chairs and so many people played this game you have no idea i think we had a community around 10 million people playing this game and, and it was huge uh, what happened is that these fans went through the roof when the, the the blizzard didn't want to hear them and their suggestion because we grouped all together we had a massive users massive players grouped together begging blizzard to uh, allow a, a one patch that is going to let dota become the center of of, of gaming in, in the you know, one server where we can competitively play dota and they didn't want to do this and guess what um the steam wanted to to host all these players they said they, we want all these people to to play our game and the, the, another important thing is league of legends riot games that's now owned by tencent also made a game and they took so many players out of the uh, the the blizzard uh, community and they serve those people much better why because the blizzard don't care about them this guy's gonna provide service and what you see now is is actually the the gaming industry towards weirship uh, uh, league of legends now have a, a nearly 50 million uh, uh, people following them like they are following the football or they are following the basketball you have the people following uh, league of legends you have around 30 million people globally following dota and how the dota is developed like an electronic sp uh, sport um and uh, this is a big misstep and misunderstanding between blizzard and its core fans because remember all these people who are playing league of legends and uh, who are playing uh, dota 2 on, on steam used to be blizzard fans they were one of the hard they were begging blizzard to to do this they didn't want now you see world of warcraft people are crying the begging there is a one very smart guy uh, in the red dress every uh, blizzcon talking to these guys pointing out to them the bugs and the problems in the system <clears throat> um 
what is also important is if you remember uh, StarCraft, StarCraft used to be so popular, especially in Korea, South Korea, so popular. Every company, I was talking the other day with, with some Korean friends in the gaming industry, they tell me every company, no matter what industry, even McDonald's in, in Korea, used to have a yearly competition for the best StarCraft employee. And the winner would get everything they want they get promoted inside the company because they play starcraft so good that's how crazy a love for the game in korea was guess what today that's not the case today in korea they tell me nobody plays starcraft anymore nobody plays starcraft simply the blizzard stopped supporting all activities related to the StarCraft there. They simply said, we don't see here any more potential to, to be present in this market, which is very harsh for the company that has such a, a massive uh, uh, fan base there. Now the number one game is League of Legends in Korea and everybody are playing it. Blizzard have uh, included another failure, huge failure. It is a Warcraft movie. The dire fans were begging for movie for decades. They were begging. I remember this very clearly. In nine, in early 2000s, so many people were talking. Blizzard have such a amazing cinegraphics. They should do a movie. They should do a movie. Everybody were talking. Just do a movie. Nobody were. Would, would, would we just want to see it just keep talking just give that story to the people they didn't do they were holding on to, until 2016 and I can tell you that movie about Warcraft is a, such a disaster and so sad to see that becoming the, 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 the it's so far from reality there is not going to be any sequel or anything because the company simply didn't didn't quadruple their money on the box office so they decided to stop and that's so sad what i want to say is um you guys should probably remember nokia they died just because they didn't listen to, 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 to the rest of the world. Everybody knew that the iPhone is going to be a hit. Only Nokia didn't want to listen to that. Everybody, everybody who saw iPhone knew it's going to be a hit. Nokia guys ignored it completely for several years. <laughs> Sega. If you can remember, Sega uh, uh, was such an awesome console to play you had so many fans that liked sega and sega was competing with nintendo at the time and they were providing really high quality because nintendo guys nintendo was one of the worst corporate companies in the world and it's not don't get me wrong bobby the guy who is running blizzard he learned everything all the bad things from nintendo because nintendo if you didn't know nintendo had the, the, at the time, they had uh, uh, other developers making the games for Nintendo. Nintendo would tell them, you cannot sell more than 10,000 of your games. Why? Because Nintendo had a cartridges for their console. And so uh, uh, to have those cartridges integrated in Nintendo, you needed to have one Nintendo chip that is making your game possible to, to, to have the cartridge that, that hold your game. Nintendo would purposely give to every developer 1% compared to how much of their own game they would have. So, for example, if you were a developer of some very successful game, Nintendo would limit you to certain amount of, of, of chips. And you had the companies, the game makers, who sell everything within a week. And then they go make another game and then so again, so Nintendo didn't allow single developer to grow up and to have a big user, ma massive user. That's why Sega was so popular. Now, the other thing I want to talk about, this is why 
uh, that this guy Bobby don't care about your game that you love and the company you love. He don't care because in Nintendo he didn't have to care about the developers. And most of those US-based developers or uh, uh, Western Europe-based developers that Japanese Nintendo owners simply didn't care. They didn't want to have anything for them. Today, when you have Nintendo Switch, nobody wants to develop games for them. Like, I was thinking a little bit, talking to a couple of guys, they say, history taught us one thing. We don't want to develop for them. And uh, that's how it is today. Sega, which I was talking about failures here. Sega missed opportunity to uh, cash in and uh, listen to their uh, US lead to get uh, what became Nintendo 64. So there is a, a company come out with a, a hardware solution and with a chip and with everything that could be revolutionary for Sega. Sega decides to have nothing to do with this. We don't want to listen to you guys. We don't want to even hear about you. We have our own direction. That became Nintendo 64. The, 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 the guy, uh, I think it was John, from, from US uh, uh, Sa Sega Saturn uh, division leader, uh, director, he, he comes again and say, these guys have another solution. Japanese company Sony had a solution for another console game. Guess what? That is today's Sony PlayStation. So at that time, Sega missed opportunity on that. Third option in early 2000, Microsoft approached them with what will become Xbox. Sega said no to that too. Guess what? Very, very little after that, Sega stopped to produce their own hardware and they became just a game developer. So the company that once produced extremely good games has died and stopped to exist. What I wanted to say to you guys is uh, let's all hope for the best that is that CEO of Blizzard, or I should say better, uh, Activision get kicked out when the uh, revenue drop below 20 bucks, which I think it will. And uh, let's prepare for the worst. And that is that we will accept some other games uh, made by some other companies that are really going to care about uh, its user base. And we give a promise that... Um, we will only follow the leaders that care about their customers, in which case these are the gamers. Take care, all, take care guys, and uh, if you like this channel, if you want to learn how to develop the games and how to join the game industry, become the part of the game industry, I'm helping currently companies do mobile games, but we do have a PC games and console games as well. Just this is at the beginning focus for the people. First time entering the industry is mobile because it's much bigger market now. Take care, guys, and see you in the next show.